Hello, my name is Paul Hall, and um, I'm a farmer here in Franklin County. And I've come to make the point that Common Core teaches our young pornography. We live in a republic that is founded on law. Putting pornography into our young is lawless business. Unchastity is responsible for the broken homes, hearts, poverty, despair, mental illness seen in society today. They produce the crimes that fill our jails. Christians are told that our morality is not wanted in the public square. But neither do Christians want their persecutors' lack of morality in the public square either. Because of perverseness, many people cannot compete in a scholarly or job setting. Common Core keeps them from being embarrassed by their moral failures because it holds all achievement to lesser goals. Romans 1.28 Since they didn't think it was worthwhile to acknowledge God, God abandoned them to a defective mind to do inappropriate things. In ages past, chastity was exalted as the virtue that gave strength and wealth. Sir Lancelot's song ascribes as many miraculous victories to his chastity. But Common Core wants to guide our young today in the perversions. The following excerpts are heavily edited, but they're still very bad. <coughs> this is what our children are being taught, forgive me. I would not say it otherwise. This is from the bluest eye. A bowl of desire ran down his genitals, and softening the lips of his anus, he wanted to act her tenderly. But the tenderness would not hold. The tightness of her vagina was more than he could bear. His soul seemed to slip down his guts and fly out into her. And the gigantic thrust made into her then provoked the only sound she made. Removing himself from her was so painful to him. He cut it short and snatched his gentles out of her dry arm of her vagina. She appeared to have fainted. Thank you for your time. My name is Vicki Boyer. I'm also a parent. I don't know how it happened, but my son is 32 years old. And I'd just like to say today that whether or not any of us like the deep particulars of the Common Core Standards, I can tell you that there is a real need for every school district in this country to have some kind of understanding about what educational concepts are taught and at what grade level. Some of you in this room were blessed that you still live in the same community in which you were born. I was blessed otherwise. I am the poster child for why we need some kind of common core. I was born down the road in Wilmington, but I started first grade in Virginia. In 12 years of public education, I attended 10 schools in four different states. In third grade, we were introduced to English grammar studies, and then we moved. I didn't encounter grammar again until middle school. At that point in time, the level of instruction was so far above my knowledge that all I could do was, you know, go it alone the American way and muddle my way through it. I still can't diagram a sentence. Now imagine if that had been mathematics. And here we are in an age of STEM education. I attended your session a couple of weeks ago and I was a little disturbed by some of the rhetoric that I heard there. The talk that we need a North Carolina curriculum written by North Carolina educators for North Carolina students. There seems to be a sense that North Carolina is some kind of island separate and remote from the rest of this country. I ask you today to recognize that we are not an island, we are a part of the whole. We cannot lure international business corporations to move here by offering their children more difficulties in school as they move from state to state. Remember the old joke that IBM stands for I've been moved. In addition, I ask you to consider the needs of our military families whose kids go from state to state to state. The Pentagon is looking at drastic cuts to our military, and that will mean base closures. So Common Core is not communism, it is only common sense. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rainer James, I'm from Craven County, and I too am with the Coastal Carolina Taxpayers Association. I'm going to stray from what I thought I was going to say because of the gentlewoman who just came before me. I, too, went to a lot of different schools. When I was 16 years old, oh, 15 years old, I moved for the 16th time. And I didn't find that dismaying. I found it very interesting. I found the differences interesting. And in the American way, I adjusted, caught up, and went on with it. Didn't cause any problems for me, and I bet you there were a lot of other children for whom it didn't cause any problems either. 
I don't know where you all are coming from and, and what your thought patterns are. I do know what I want you to do. I want you to get this common core state standards off our backs. Out of here, gone. Our children aren't common, they're not state, and they're not really standards. They've got all this baggage trailing along behind them. People who have spoken to you today have described, some of them quoted chapter and verse, of what brings this baggage, what makes it curriculum. Now the young, waggity-tailed, cheerful teachers you've heard from are saying it's teachers are in control of their classrooms. And I suspect to date they are. And we've heard some, from some, what I'm sure are great teachers, and they're sincere. What they don't know is what's coming down the pike. This thing is about control. Control of what our children will learn. Control of their attitudes. Control of our country in a, at a later time. It is horrendous. If you, if you aren't convinced yet that that's true, listen to Kim Fink again the woman in purple over here again, and some of the many great speakers who quoted you chapter and verse, because they're not giving you a song and dance, they're telling you like it is. Um, my, hello, my name is Lola Wainer, and I am nine years old. I am a homeschooler. I asked my parents to homeschool me because I felt I wasn't getting a good education in public school. I was miserable in public school. I sat by and watched as my friends were not learning but playing during the day. I don't want common core because it will make kids into, into mindless people. It, I don't think it's right that the government should tell my parents how to raise me. I learned differently from other children. I enjoyed my home school. I learned math, English, social studies, science, Spanish, mythology, and many other subjects. If common core gets past my home school sub subjects will decrease and the way I will learn will have to change. That is not right. No one has the right to tell me how to think or believe, which is against my civil rights, and if you pass this, you are going against the Constitution. Thank you. I'm Hal James, I'm from Craig and Kay. that's one real tough act to follow. <laughs> I uh, was born in Davie County. I'm also a member of Coastal Carolina Taxpayers Association. Now, this committee needs to be hearing from the citizens of North Carolina. As you're well aware, the population of North Carolina is around 10 million. There are only 8,500 teachers employed in North Carolina. Well over half of the speakers we've heard from today have been teachers or administrators or somehow in the education system. And I'd like for you to please keep that in mind. They're teachers, social workers, and they jumped on board early to protect their interests and to be, uh, support their system. I ask you to please keep that in mind. Uh, <clears throat> I've often thought that our country needs to return to its Judeo-Christian roots like the preacher that just talked about. Our founders gave us a republic form of government that acknowledged our God-given rights, protecting those rights through the Constitution, and especially protecting the rights of the minority through checks and balances. I thought that this needed to be done for our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, all of mine, of whom I love very much. I didn't realize how progressive the left had ingrained itself in our media, newspapers, entertainment, radio, TV industries, and our educators from a very early age through all our learning years, which I hope will be all of our life, that, uh, that we are educating them to accept a national form of government, no longer a federal go go government. The George Sowers, the Bill Gates, and the Coney Capitalists have a grand scheme to make service of all of our children. I ask you, who have you heard today that was not in that system, educators or big business, these crony capitalists speak in favor of common core. Hi, I'm Peyton Soloway, I'm from Cleveland County. I'm a grandmother, that's my sole claim to fame here. Um, I represent the Shelby Tea Party, and I represent a group, a Facebook group 
uh, parents and educators against common voice standards, which had over 11,000 members. Um, what we appear to have in common voice standards is one concentrated, ideologically similar group of people establishing the curriculum and overseeing the textbooks, testing, and teaching procedures for all schools in the United States. Common Core is a radical experiment in which our children are the guinea pigs. Even Bill Gates has, has made that same statement. He said, it would be great if our education stuff worked, but we won't know that for about 10 years. Um, I hear teachers here, some speaking for it, a few speaking against it, but I know teachers from bridge clubs and uh, my children's teachers who say they fear talking about King Common Core, saying anything negative. And uh, one of the ladies here uh, said that there is a a leadership requirement that they get graded positively if they speak highly and promote Common Core in communities. And I thought that was very interesting. Um, the United States, we're creators. The Chinese and Japanese are the makers. They have readjusted their teaching methods and they're sending, the Japanese are sending over 200,000 people to our universities. The only time we send people overseas is so they can get a cultural education. You don't send them over there because their, educate, at their universities are so wonderful, with the exception of a few of course. The Common Core is, at this point, unknown how much it's going to cost. I looked on the internet and what I found was that uh, states will spend up to an estimated $10 million up front and as much as $9 million per year for the first seven years. That should mean something to everyone in here. Thank you very much.